Welcome to the Prophetic Zone with Apostles Tommy and Katrina Gary, Senior Pastors of Thy Kingdom Come Global Ministries, right here in Panama City, Florida. Here are Apostles Tommy and Katrina Gary. Good morning. Welcome to the Prophetic Zone with your host, Apostle Katrina Garrett. And your host, Apostle Tommy Garrett. We welcome you this morning right here on the Prophetic Zone on Fox 28. Wake up America. Thank you so much for tuning in. <laughs> for tuning in this morning, we are so grateful up, and thankful up, for this up, the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in it. So thank you to all our viewers again. Um, we're still running into a, a lot of people who said they've been watching our show, and um, especially um, where I work at, a lot of people have been coming in saying that they're enjoying our show. So thank you again for watching us. Um, we that's our mission, right? Our mission is to Amen. is to be um, to reach the people, to reach um, the nations, and reach people with the God's word. And that's what Tommy and I is called to do. And we're humble, um, and we're just thankful. We're thankful again for you, and we'd like to thank our sponsors again for supporting the vision that God has given us. Amen. We're excited. And so um, as we have been continuing on talking about the five crowns, um, on the last two shows we've um, been talking about the five crowns, doing the teaching. The Lord pressed upon Tommy and I to teach. Um, and so that's what we're doing. We're taking a break from um, having guests. But we will, you know, start back having guests back on the show. But we just are in a season right, right. where we want to teach, right? Amen, amen. And so on, on, on last week, we talked about the crown of, of rejoicing. The week before that, we talked about the incorruptible crown. I pray and hope that you did go back and read the scriptures. If you are not familiar where they came from, you can go back and view our show on um, the Internet, on YouTube. We, we do have it available on there. You can go on there and view it, and, um, and um, you can see the scriptures. Go back, study it, read it, because I guarantee you, when you walk in these crowns, you, you trust me, you, you're, you're walking in true royalty, right? Amen. Right. So, the, t so this morning, we're going to talk a little a bit about time. another crown. This is actually one of my favorite crowns. It's called the crown of righteousness. It's my favorite crown. Yes, one of my favorites. Because <laughs> it, it, it is a test. Yes, it is. It is. To get to that righteous place is a test. Oh for yeah, all of us. yeah. It's a test. I mean, you know, to walk righteous, you know, we have to go through a testing to be to be right before God, and so right. that comes through the cleansing of um, our sins through the blood of Jesus Christ. And it's tough to get to that perfection that God wants in you and me. Yeah, yeah. It's it's not. You know, a lot of people say, "Oh, it's easy to be saved." And as soon as they say that, you know, make one of them upset, and you'll oh, find no. that flesh start rising it ain't up. Easy. That's Amen. right. And so we're gonna go. We're gonna come from Second Timothy. We're going to start at chapter 4, and we're going to start at the 6th verse, and we're going to read down to, um, we're going to read down to probably the 8th verse. The yeah, down verse. to the 8th verse. So right here, if you have your Bibles, we're, going, we're coming from 2 Timothy 4, chapter 6. It says, for I am now ready to be offered at this time of my departure is at hand. I fought the good fight. And I finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but to all unto them also that love his appearing. And we're going to stop right there. What a wonderful scripture. This is one of my favorite scriptures. I have a, quite a few favorite scriptures in the Bible. But... Um, this is the Apostle Paul, one of my favorite people in the Bible as well. I have a couple of them too. But um, he's, he's basically talking about um, fighting the good course. Uh, a lot of scholars, um, from what I've studied in times past, this passage of scripture was, you know, particularly saying that, you know, at this time, Apostle Paul was in imprisonment. And um, they were saying that you know, he was at his point where he was getting ready to be beheaded. You know, some of the apostles were beheaded. Some of the apostles, they believe, were um, stoned, and some of them, um, you know, were, were all martyred except for, you know, the Apostle John. But they believe some of them was beheaded or some of them was stoned to death. And so um, one of the things that the reason why I believe um, that, you know, they were talking about the Apostle Paul is because in another passage of Scripture, it says that um, he was ready, you know, to be poured out like a drink offering. And so, um, you know, he was, he was basically saying he was ready to, to go and, and just Have lay his head down, off. lay his life down to, to be with the Lord. Um, he, was, he was thrown into prison. He was persecuted because 
he was a man of God and he preached the gospel during a time where people didn't want to hear Christ preached. And he knew it was his time, his time was at hand and what he was doing, he, he was commanding Timothy to go forth and preach the gospel. So the, the, he knew the gospel had to keep, had to keep going on. So the, 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 for the righteousness of, of, of the Jesus' teaching, he wanted to go forth. He had to make sure before he died that Timothy and the rest of his followers were going to pass it on, that we may have it, that we may receive it, the clouds of glory today. That's right. Um, because, you know, when we're, when we're looking at this crown of righteousness, this crown of righteousness is a crown that we are obtaining while we live here in the earth. Um, and so, therefore, because Jesus came to save us, he saved us from our sins to make us righteous before Christ. Not only that, to make us righteous before the people. Um, to make us righteous before, before man, to make us righteous that many can see in the world that we are living according to God's word. We're made in the image of God. And so um, a lot of people say that we're all God's children. Technically, we're all God's creation, but those who are his children are the ones who receive his son. Jesus said, I am the way and the life and the truth, and no man can come to the Father except by me. And so, you know, even right here in 2 Philippians chapter 2, 17, this is when Paul said, but even if I'm being poured out like a drink offering on this sacrifice and service coming from your faith, I am glad and I rejoice with you all. And so in the, in the, in the book of Philippians, Paul was talking about how he was being poured out, you know, because he was rejoicing, because he was being, you know, um, he was being persecuted for the sake of Christ. You know, one of the things that Jesus said in the book of Matthew, I love Matthew um, 5 through 7. They call that the Beatitudes. I, I call it the beat attitude. Um, if you want to know more of how you can live righteous and live for the Lord, read Matthew chapters 5 through 7. Jesus speaks to your heart. He speaks to your mind, your body, and your soul. He tells you right in those four, in those, you know, is it, let's see, five, six, seven, so that's three chapters. He tells you how to live, right? That's right. He, and, he tells and, and, you. And he speaks of um, what, what Paul was trying to do was he was speaking that we may be sons and daughters, that we may be encouraged in, a whole, in our holiness lives to be holy, pleasing before God because he have a, a benefit of that crown of righteousness that we will receive one day, that each and every one of us that we will receive. And once we receive that crown of glory and that, that reward and that excellence in, in, in it, that God cannot lie. God, God said he cannot lie. His, his, his word is either yea or nay. Right. Because if, in Matthew 5, I want to read this, Matthew 5, verse 11. It She's says, a Bible jumper. <laughs> it says, Blessed are ye when men shall rival and persecute you and shall in all manner say evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Rejoice and exceedingly be glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecute the prophets, which they were before you. So right here, again, what my husband was saying, the Apostle Paul was talking about how he fought the fight. He kept the faith. That's right. This crown of righteousness is basically a crown to where you have to keep the faith. What, what, what do you mean by keeping the faith? Keeping your heart right, living according to God's word when you're persecuted, when people come against you. He said rejoice. And, you know, when it goes back to the crown of rejoicing, when we talked about that, it talked about basically it being a soul winner's crown, right? <laughs> Amen. Excuse me, my husband, if we cough because we got a cold. Both got so. a cold. <laughs> I got a pretty rough. But, um. Be hitting on me, I ain't going to do that. <laughs> <laughs> but, but when we get caught up on precepts on precepts, we have to, we have to look what prevails in, 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 in the righteousness that God has laid up for us and the, 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 the kingdom living that we live in and the, the, the places where we're trying to get to. And God wants us to be. Well, he said, he said, there's, there's, he said, there is laid up for you a crown of righteousness. That's right. Once we get in that glorious place, 
we know without a shadow of doubt, if you knew, if you know who you are, you know what you are, you know who you are, you know without a shadow of doubt on these precepts and precepts that you are a, a, a son and a daughter of, of the great king, hallelujah, that you know that you will have this, this righteousness, this, this crime that, that everyone looking for at the end of, of everything. Everything has a beginning. As Proverbs says, everything has a beginning and everything has an end. At the end, I want my righteous crown that God laid up for me and stored up for me. Yeah, I mean, you know, because right here, you know, it's like this. Um, you know, um, I don't know if y'all ever read this book. I think it was called Jesus Freaks. And it talks about people who were martyred, the blood of the martyrs. Um, because there were a lot of people, to, to be martyred is a, a person that has been basically killed, um, for innocence, you know, um, because they haven't committed any crime against the government or against the law, but they just, they were preaching the, the gospel of peace. And so right here, you know, Paul was being murdered. I mean, he was being murdered for the sake of the gospel. You know, a lot of times we say, for God I live, for God I die. Do we really mean that? I mean, do we really mean that from the bottom of our heart? Will you go over the sea to places like, um, places in Europe, where it is really forbidden over there to preach the gospel, are you willing to go over there and lay your life down to preach to a people who, um, who, who are desperately hungry for the word of God, but they live under a dictatorship to where they can't even bring Bibles? There are some nations, I think, I don't want to name them all, but I know Russia's one, or maybe Saudi, that you can't even bring a Bible into that nation. Are you willing to sacrifice to that some point? Place, some place so we have to be careful. When you say, for God live, for God die, do you really mean that? Are you really willing to die for the sake of the gospel? Because right <laughs> here, we're reading the scripture of a man that did. He said he was ready. He said his departure. And I love when he said a departure because the Apostle Paul knew that he was not going to die. He was dying already on earth. When you're dying, you're actually dying as we live. To die is to gain. That's what Apostle Paul said. And that means to die to our flesh because God is spirit. He is spirit and the flesh cannot obtain the things of the spirit. And in order for us to spiritually have that confidence and faith into who Christ is, we have to die to our flesh. And that comes with, with, with practice. That's why God causes your friends and he causes people that are close to you to come against you. Because that is a purging that we must go through in order for us to obtain this crown. Right, honey? Amen. And, 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 and have you ever wondered, why is it called the, the, um, the, the crown of righteousness? Hmm? Tell me. <laughs> <laughs> and the crown of righteousness is mercy, which is free grace bestowed on us, that God bestowed on us, free grace. Yeah, and, right. and if you look at it negatively, um, our righteousness is a merit to this crime. See, the apostles make it clear and, dis, and, 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 and clear this, this distinction between rewards and bestowed by merit and by grace in Romans 6, 23. The gifts of God, eternal life, had rewarded, been merit. But the apostles, God, eternal life, have gave saved. They gave wages of, the, of God's eternal life. And, and this is the reason, and the, the obedience and the sacrifices they gave, the, the, um, mm -hmm. they, they gave as a good merit mm -hmm. and faith of everything that they went through while they was walking on earth. They, they left um, um, significant um, writings and, and teachings and, and bylaws and stuff for us to live by so mm -hmm. that we can live the same way right. that Jesus left for us. So, and, and us doing this merit, we, we have to do the same things as being... Receive the grace of God free and teach people that it's free. There's nothing, there's nothing brought because the Bible says that we're brought without a price. Exactly. So there's nothing exactly. brought exactly. Uh, in, the, in, in the eyes of God in the kingdomship. We, we, sh we should just bestow the, our righteous crown and, and, and receive that gift as a free giving and, 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 and getting the glory that God wants to be in and, and, as his free grace bestowed upon us. Exactly, because basically grace is considered to be unmerited favor. Amen. And, and favor is not is something materially, okay? Favor is being, for one, marked as a child of God. Favor is when God shows himself to you. Daily. Just like Mary, when, when Jesus, when the, when the angel came to let her, gave her the good news that she was going to birth Christ into the world, she, the Bible said that she, I was sown favor into his sight. 
Favor means that God turns his face toward you. Amen. He turns his face toward you. If you go to the book of number six, number six talks about the uh, ironic blessings. Go back and read that. Okay. Because even to this, even to this day, the Jews still um, recite this, this scripture. You know, they bless their house when they go in and they bless their house when they go out. And so therefore, when you go to number six, it talks about the Lord turning his face and shining his countenance upon you. That's favor. Favor is not because you got a whole bunch of friends. Favor is not because you drive nice cars. Favor is not because you, you have access to, to um, go on some big name preacher's um, church to preach. That's not true favor. You know what I'm saying? Because worldly people get that. But true favor is when the Lord can turn his face. And this is what, to me, what favor is. is when you can pray a prayer and instantly the angels go and do what's supposed to be done. That's favor, because when you speak to the Lord, he instantly reacts to what you've spoken. And a lot of us need to get to that place because we're so stuck in ourselves. We've, we, we, we've become too vain. And, 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 this, and attaining this crown of righteousness, it causes you to be more humble. Um, the Bible talks about pride goes before fall. And we have to be careful. You know, we should not look for people to follow us. My husband and I are not looking for people to follow us. We're not looking for people to lord over them. We are simply servants of Christ, preaching the gospel of peace to hearts that, that, that need to know and understand that God loves them. And no matter what they've done, um, if you look at me and my husband's background, you would probably say they don't deserve to be where we are, and we don't. Man. But like my husband said earlier, it's by the grace. It's by the grace of God, the grace of God that he gave us his son, Jesus Christ, that he chose us um, to be able to change our life and, and, to, and to proclaim this message of hope and peace and love. And so, you know, um, to walk in this crown and obtain these, these crowns that we're obtaining, it's a reward that we will receive because in 1 Corinthians 5 and 10, it talks about how we all one day will have to sit at the judgment seat of Christ and all will be according to what he has done, whether good or bad. Whether good or bad, you will have to face the righteous judge. Right here, that's what Paul said. He said, henceforth is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me. Praise God, thanks be to God that God is a righteous judge. Man can never be righteous in judging people. And a lot of times we look at the prematurity of somebody's life or we look at things where people are now not knowing where they might be the next 10 years. Uh, me and my husband were talking about this, we, we were talking about this the other day, about how the thief was on the cross. And Jesus, the two thieves were on the cross, one on the left and one on the right. And one of them was talking about, why are you laughing? I don't laugh, we be talking about that. I know, I know, I understand that. But one of them was talking about how if you be the son of God, call down the angels to get us to save us. He but then one was, was, one was, the other one was humble. And he said, we've done nothing wrong. We've done something wrong, but this man is innocent. And he said, Lord, remember me in your kingdom. And Jesus turned around, stopped dying just to say to this, guy, this, to this thief, this day you'll be with me in paradise. And so, you know, it's amazing to where he righteously judged. And a lot of people probably feel like he, don't, he, didn't, he didn't deserve to take a thief. I know people who live a wretched life. I tell people all the time, especially we minister to people who have had loved ones that died that might not was in church. They might have been out there on drugs or they might have been, you know, running around and living, you know, ungodly. And, 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 and people are, are they in They can't fear. be saved. They can't and, and they be say, saved. well, I don't know if they really went or not. We don't know. I, I, but this is, this, is, this is what my husband and I always tell people. We always remind them of the thief on the cross because you have until your last breath to confess him. As long as your heart is right with the Lord, and I'm not saying strive to live right and then wait till you die and confess Jesus. I'm not saying that. Well, you, you want to experience him while you're on earth. You do. You want to experience his love and grace. But I do believe that there would be people that you would least suspect in heaven because they might have been, you know, in a family that, that, that was saved and, and they just was, the stronghold of the world was pulling on them, but it didn't mean that their heart still wasn't longing for the peace of Christ. But what I'm saying is that we bring them comfort because we don't know who goes. The Bible even says we don't know who goes to heaven or hell. We don't know. And so that's something that we shouldn't focus on as far as judging where people go. 
our focus should be should be especially those of us who are Christians is preaching the God's word day and night day and night talking about Jesus telling people the goodness of the Lord telling people how good Jesus is lifting him up everywhere we go so that people can hear his name he said if I be lifted up you used to always say that when you used to preach. All right. <laughs> he'll draw. Ah, he lift he it up. Lifted up. He'll draw all I'll man. draw. Anyway. <laughs> I, I would draw. He would draw all No, man. I'm not talking about but, you. I'm talking about Jesus. You would say, I would draw all men. But I always love to say that scripture. But anyway. But it, um, but 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 saying, not cutting you off, honey, but I, saying I, what she was I saying think. about um, there's a lot of unrighteous um, stuff going on in the world today. And, and, and what I'm what I'm getting around to is we being manipulated and we being um, um, deceived. manipulated, deceived, and um, and conquered, and and, uh, and 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 willing to back to back down and accept a lot of things that's going on that's that's not righteous that we know that's not right, but we're 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 contemplating and we're 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 making agreement and and, and this is this is what as Christians as walking with this crown of righteousness that, that what we shouldn't do we should stand firm in what we believe in. And there's a lot of stuff that's going on that they want us to, to take and swallow. And, and this is this is how everything's going to be in America right now. And this is how it's going to be. But if, but as Christians and, and me walking for my crown of righteousness, I don't agree with none of it. I'm not I'm not accepting. A, I, I don't want to see it. I, I don't. I, I'm, I'm I'm believing in standing firm on my faith on what God. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not talking about no religious either. I'm not, I'm way past religious. I'm talking about the foundation that God has placed me on. I'm, I'm talking about the foundation, this, what this Bible says. What, literally what the Bible says, it, a lot of people like to come and the Bible is written by men. Yes, it was it, it was inspired by men, but I was taught that this is a living organism. This the living organism is alive. That means this Bible is alive because everything that you can find in this Bible, you can find somewhere going around the world today. Pretend and what I'm life. saying is, mm -hmm. This manipulation spirit was going around. We can't be manipulated by it. We have to stand firm on the, the, the receive that crown of righteousness. You have to be mandated. You you can't just you just can't do. You can't straddle the fence and and, and and try to live this way to, to to comfort these people and live this way to live with this party. And you you got to make yourself stand firm on what God and what God stands for and, and the beliefs of what this nation was built on. This this nation was built on. God, hallelujah. You know, and that's true. Um, um, you can't, you, you can't, you can't actually, it, compromising is one of the biggest things I think a lot of Christians do. Well, um, that's what but, it is, they compromise. You know, but the thing of it is, is that you can't compromise. Um, and nobody's saying for you to be self-righteous because you have to be careful. A self-righteous spirit is a mean spirit and it's it can destroy spirit. lives. Um, but living, Pharisee, what I mean by, li spirit. what we're saying by living righteous is, is making right choices. Um, I remember years ago they came up with this uh, band that everybody was wearing back in the day. I don't know who started this this fade, but uh, fad, but it was what would Jesus do? I think somebody was trying to teach you know if somebody talked about you behind your back, you know what would Jesus do? You know if somebody said something that hurt your feelings or offended you. So what, what we mean by being righteous is, is that there, there's no such thing as eye for eye, two for two, tick for tack. Um, if somebody comes up and they rip you off some money, you know what I'm saying? It's it's you. It's it's your it's your responsibility as a Christian take to, to make a righteous judgment on what <laughs> you're gonna do and how you're gonna handle the situation. Don't go shoot them. Take it to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> okay, next time I remember you said I remember you said that. And I remember you said that. Man, I have but, to take a lot to Jesus. But what I'm saying is that. Um, uh, so there's some things you have to just let roll off your back. You know what I'm saying? You have to just let go um, when people come up against you and when people say things against you or when obstacles happen. Somebody might cut. I saw on the news um, the other day where people were um, road rage. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I used to have it really bad. Uh, really bad. I thought that was you trying to get that car. Hit that car. <laughs> <laughs> don't even go there. I don't, I don't do it like I used to now. But I ain't going to tell y'all no lie. One time I was on my way to preach and I was late. And I'm riding past these older people and I'm going off in my car. And I'm in clarity on top of that. And the Lord, my husband said, honey, do you, you don't forget who you, for a second there I had forgot who I was. But what I'm saying is that. I had to lay hands on that. She's <laughs> name. <laughs> but what I'm saying is don't run the old little lady over. Over and cuss out. 
cuss her out because you late, you know, and you try to get there on time. Those are things that we have to be careful, okay? We we have to be careful. So, but anyway, when I saw ABC News, this dude was had road rage, rolled past this lady, he flipped her a bird, and then next thing you know, his truck gets out of control, he flips down the road. And so I'm thinking, now, was that worth it? You know, mm -hmm. so it's like, those are the simple things. I know a lot of Christians, a lot of those Christians got road rage. Now, I roll with some, well, I roll with some super saints. That's what I mean by you some can't. Some preachers. That's why <laughs> I mean you can't straddle the fence. <laughs> That's right. And so, so we have to remember that. I mean, those are times that this scripture and other scriptures in the Bible, you know, need to pop in our head because we forget. And that flesh rise up, and we, you know, and you don't know who in the car. You know, I remember years ago, me and my husband was at the mall. I got to share this story. And it was a patient, you know, years ago, I used to work at a hospital. A person uh -oh. used to talk to me about Jesus when I first got saved years ago. She telling everything, y'all. But anyway, um, when I saw the young man at the mall, me and my husband saw him. He was young. Well, he wasn't young, but he was an older guy. Um, we had pulled the front of him. <laughs> So we saw this guy blowing his horn, going off, cussing us out. And I was like, is that Mr. Such and Such? I was like, oh my God. I, said, <laughs> I was man. like, is that him? I, said, I mean, I said, look at that Christian right there. <laughs> he ain't so, going to get his crown of righteous. And so my husband told myself, honey, you better take, pay attention to what he's doing, baby. Make sure you don't, you know, watch yourself. And I was like, wow. So, you know, that's kind of funny. Um, you know, you have, we have to be careful, I, I'm just saying, y'all. We have to. You don't know who watching, who's seeing you do what. It, I'm not saying that you got to put on the front in front of people either. I mean, be that way at home. Don't let your children see you in church, jumping around, giving God glory, and then, you know, words of uncleanness. Because they will tell out. it. <laughs> they will tell it. They sure will. Oh, they will remind you. You're supposed to be a Christian. Daddy, yeah, you're right. supposed to be a Christian. Mama, you're supposed to be a Christian. You know, Grandmama, you're supposed to be a Christian. They will remind you. So when you walk you in know. that crown of righteousness, that's what, literally what it means, it righteousness. Means righteousness. It, it means, means you have to live holy. You have to strive your best to live holy. Because once you live holy, you'll see a lot of, a lot of stuff will potentially get a little easy for you mm -hmm. to, to swallow yeah. on and, and bite with dealing with people in the yeah, world. Yeah, yeah, it'll get and Dealing easier. with unsaved people, it, 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 it'll come a little easier. Some some people you just never swallow. I'm gonna tell you just like some people you just can't never swallow. You, some people you just want to spill them out your mouth, but <laughs> <You're so stupid. laughs> but the more you stay in that word, and, and, and you know the that you're gonna you get that crown of righteousness, it's more easy for you to live for Christ <laughs> you stay and be that kingdom, <laughs> be that kingdom living. Okay. I'm so as as we close and, and and as we close on the, on the crown of righteousness, we just want to enhance everybody on this 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 being being encouraged. And, and I know there's people watching this morning. And if you want to be encouraged, you can you, you can Facebook us, um, email us, um, look us up on on on, the, on Facebook. However you want to oh, do it, but we after that, we I accept prayers too. and. We're willing to pray for you. It doesn't make a difference. Um, you can call us. We pray for you. Email us. You can pray. We'll pray with you. But that's all we want to do is, 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 is teach people to live the kingdom life. And if you want to visit our ministry, Thy Kingdom Come Global Ministries, we're at the Country Inn and Suite on Sunday mornings, 1030 a.m., 2203 Harrison Avenue, Panama City, Florida. 1030 every Sunday, we're at the Country Inn and Suite. This is where we have our services. And so God bless you. Thank you for tuning in. And have a nice day. And when you see us around town, just come up to us and give us a hug and get at me, man. <laughs> <laughs>